in this week's episode, I will be guiding you along the creative process involved in creating this original oil painting. All of the successes and failures captured on video. Welcome to Peace and Nature. For a complete list of all of my colors, please refer to the description box down below where they will be typed out for you. First thing we're going to do is complete the rough sketch. The rough sketch serves no other purpose than to place the figure onto the canvas. I'm working on an 18, 24 inch cotton canvas. The secret here is to stand an arm's length away, use straight lines and angles, and not put any detail. Now, color mixing. I'm going to lay down what is known as the color value web. Now what this is, is an organization of flesh color on the palette, not necessarily the exact colors that I'll be using, but rather this is going to help me keep the organization of my values on the palette. And as a side note, if you would like to see some behind the scenes footage of this episode, as well as the previous episode and the episodes following this one, please check out my Patreon account where each week I'm uploading a patron-only behind-the-scenes episode for all of my patrons on patreon.com. To summarize flesh color in the sense of basic skin tone, think about a type of gray-orange. I won't get into too many specifics with each color mixture. I try not to think of it as a recipe. As you're seeing, I'm using a little bit of mineral spirits and my medium, which is walnut alkyd. Think of it as a grayed orange. Sometimes you can have a uh, kind of grayed uh, pinkish type of color for flesh tone, but it's really a good idea to kind of react when it comes to mixing color and work through perception. Now, the brave start. So the brave start, basically the beginning is one of the most, uh, the times where we're the most timid in a, in a painting. And in the beginning, you should really just let go, um, let loose as you're seeing what's going on here. I'm starting off in the Alla Prima fashion. Uh, remember Alla Prima means painting wet paint onto wet paint. And now that I have a pretty good idea where the main focal point is going to fit, it's now time to state the masses. And this just means I'm going to use large areas of color and value to get a sense of the composition. The composition is the most important thing, in my opinion, when it comes to creating your own original oil paintings. So once we have the large masses stated, now we're going to draw with paint. And this is going to require a little bit of bravery. And remember, alla prima means painting wet on wet, which means what you're seeing right now, wet paint directly onto wet paint. Uh, what I mean about the bravery involved in this stage is that you're really just trying to uh, disassociate from the fact that you're painting a human being. You're looking for shape. You're standing back as far as you can. Try to keep yourself an arm's length away from the uh, painting or the surface that you're working on and look for what you see when your eyes are blurred. Blur your eyes to see color, squint to see value. Keep every shape simple. Just a few simple brush strokes for each shape. And it doesn't have to be perfect. In the beginning, we will make the most mistakes, but we will correct those mistakes as you'll see later on pretty much most of the marks that i made at this stage were uh, pretty much in error but that's okay you have to start somewhere the important thing is to start with something that feels solid you can always manipulate the paint and don't worry i'll show you exactly what i mean about that and now what differentiates this from a standard head and shoulders painting is that the background is very important and it's an integral part of what is going on within the face. I'm relating the face to the background as well as the background to the face. Now, 
planes. So plane just means a three-dimensional construct of a flat sheet in space. In other words, planes are just surfaces. The surfaces that are facing the light more are lighter. The surfaces that are facing the light less are darker. And now you're seeing we're starting to put in a little bit of the light for the sclera, that is the white of the eye, which of course is more of a gray color. And now we're putting in some of the bottom planes underneath of the chin. And at this point, I had completely messed up. The likeness wasn't really there. But remember what I said earlier, as long as you have something that feels solid, you can do something like ghost. And I'll show you what I mean about ghost. See how the side to the left of the painting, well, left for us, was scraped. I used a palette knife to scrape off uh, some of the detail that was on the painting. Maintained the structure, however. Remember, as long as you have something that feels three-dimensional, you can easily manipulate the paint. And this is how you manipulate the paint. You ghost. See how I'm using the palette knife to ghost a little bit more? Whoops, a little mistake there. And then just go right over top of it. Make your decisions. Put the nose, say, how about down here? And then compare it to, say, the eyes. And then start to build. Now at this stage, I already have my composition figured out. I know where all of the masses are going to fit. So pretty much now is the time to build the main focal point. And in a composition, there's usually an area that has the most focus. It's usually the area that you want the eyes to be drawn to first. In that case, it's the face, of course. So you're seeing how we're starting to now uh, correct some of the mistakes. Remember this, the photo reference is just a suggestion. That's why I don't have the photo reference in each clip. I only show you the photo reference when needed. And by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, the photo reference was taken from a copyright free, meaning it's free for people to use for commercial purposes and artistic purposes from unsplash.com. They're not sponsoring me to say this. I'm just letting you know where the photo reference came from. And look in the description box if you would like to uh, see more information about this photo reference that was used here. But remember, the photo reference is just a suggestion. This is a phrase that I'm going to continue to repeat as you're going to start to see more uh, original oil paintings of mine uh, developed on this YouTube channel as I guide you along the process, of course. And remember, the background is just as important as the foreground when it comes to composition. As you saw, I started with a dark layer first. Now I'm putting in a uh, little bit of a lighter layer, working wet on wet, so uh, Allo Prima. Now I'm going in with another layer in Allo Prima, wet on wet. And I'm creating the illusion of distance by putting those layers, but you'll see a few more layers later on. Now a few more brush strokes for the clothing, and I'm definitely going to do some uh, editing at this point, and we can refer to this as creativity. So take a look at the photo reference now. I'm not going to paint what I'm seeing when I'm looking at the photo reference. Nope, the photo reference is merely a suggestion. Now what I'm doing is I'm painting what I feel would fit with the composition. I'm thinking of the composition in the abstract and how it enhances the, uh, the visual storytelling of this painting. This is a much more relaxed painting as you're seeing towards the bottom. And you have complete and total freedom in your own creative process. Practice this as much as you can. Practice your creative process just as much as you practice your technique. In my opinion, I don't really see much of a point in me personally being the very best at making something look realistic, but then why am I making something look realistic? What, what am I trying to do with my paintings? Hopefully that makes some kind of sense. Now with the hand, I'm just looking at abstract shape. Uh, the placement of the hand is uh, a little bit uh, wrong in the first day. You'll see how I correct it later. Um, but Basically, a few simple shapes for each area for the hand and for the hair. 
as you're seeing here, the most important thing is that this reads at a distance. For motivation, I think of John William Waterhouse with the, the red, the bright red hair. I think of John Singer Sargent's uh, Lady Macbeth for the position of the hand. So I do take a lot of inspiration from other artists in the past. So that pretty much sums up the first day. So now I'm just going to let it dry for a couple days. And now the painting is completely dry. After a couple days, we're going to look at contours and accents. When you're reworking a painting, this is the best time to go in with a thin application of paint. I use a little bit of uh, ivory black, sap green, and alizarin to draw this line, this contour that I'm using to put more specificity to the face. But don't think that I'm going to leave the edges this sharp, however. I'm just trying to find a little bit more definition on the side of the face. And the important thing is to do this from a distance, even when you're uh, going to render the face a little bit more. Try to keep yourself at a distance because at this stage, it's really easy to look into the painting too much and miss the big picture. And this is one of the reasons why I like to start in the Alla Prima fashion lately uh, just because imagine if I had started with these outlines in the beginning I would just be kind of filling in like a coloring book which is there's no problem with that but I, I prefer to work this way see how look at this magical brush stroke there for the accent of the side of the eye see how the accent just helps to create more depth in the forms and I just find that to be a much more satisfying way of um, creating an oil painting rather than uh, having to fill in between the lines uh, like a coloring book. Now we're going to look into the values to create subtlety. Subtlety just means how close can I get something to something else yet maintain variation. So what I'm doing is I'm putting in a very very slight value transition for the bottom of the mandible. That's the corner for the ramus of the jaw. Notice that value is almost imperceptible, but it's darker than the surrounding values. That's a very important thing to do, is to know your values and know how far you can compress them to further describe the illusion of form. In most cases, a photograph will flatten out this transition. This is a very delicate edge. So we're going to take an even closer look at how this edge is painted. Think about a sandwich. You'll see what I mean. A sandwich, you say. One value here and another value that we painted previously. Get a dry, soft brush. It's like magic. See how the edge is just right to describe the curvature of the form. But don't use it everywhere. Even though it feels magical in one corner, save those very delicate edges for the areas that are most delicate, like the corner of the nose here. I don't want that edge to be too sharp, nor do I want to leave too much of a harsh line on the corner of the side of the nose. And when you're in these stages of the painting, make your decisions from further back. Don't make all of your decisions standing four inches away from the painting. Now let's think about the brush strokes. Yes, the brush strokes. It's kind of like dressing to a salad in a sense. Um, you can eat a salad without the dressing, but it's kind of nice to have the dressing, if you know what I mean. Uh, now with the hair, of course, I'm pushing the red a little brighter than the photo reference you saw earlier. Think about the direction of each brush stroke. I'm making each brush stroke go in the direction of the form of the hair. The hair has planes just like the face. The hair has areas that are facing the light 
more than others. And it's very important with your brush strokes to leave a very definitive mark where you are most confident and areas you are less confident, make the brush stroke a little less obvious. So this is how we kind of sneak in that kind of uh, brush stroke-ish look to a painting. And what that means, we're deceiving the viewer a little bit. We're making certain areas look effortless, where indeed we had to put a ton of effort just to make something look effortless. That's what brush strokes can do. Now to obtain very soft brush strokes, you can paint wet on wet, which is what we're doing for the hair. There is a darker layer of red, but sometimes you want kind of a staggered looking brush stroke. Wet over dry is going to be one way to obtain another type of effect. See how we're letting the brush stroke move up? So we're painting over dry areas of the bottom of the hair, whereas the session before I was painting wet over wet. Now I'm painting uh, wet over dry. As you're seeing the brush stroke moves up to leave some kind of a staggered looking, if that's even the right word, you'll see what I mean. Sometimes it's better to just show you. It's like magic. And that's the kind of effect that I wanted to have there. Now for layers and distance. Again, with the background, uh, I raised the uh, ISO a little bit on the camera so you can see a little more clearly. So the background has many layers, layers that were in Alla Prima, and now we're going in again, painting wet onto dry. But we're painting wet onto dry on the background so that we can go wet into wet again. If it's a little confusing, all it means is that I'm repainting the background in the way I did before, but I'm letting the colors behind show through. It's just paint, really. It's just paint. Yes, I messed up. I'm using a horizontal line to check my distance there for the hand. The hand is a little too far from the face, so we're just going to move the whole hand. Again, it's just paint. A series of brush strokes will help to conjure up the illusion of form of the hand. And I, I thought after the second time that um, I painted the hand, it made a little more sense to have the hand a little bit closer to the face. So just because you've placed something in the wrong place in a painting doesn't mean it's all over. And sometimes it's a lot more fun to just repaint an area. I've mentioned this earlier, but wet on wet is one of the best ways to get seemingly faint edges as we're doing in the background. Just a little tip to get the softest edges you can possibly paint. But you say something is missing? Oh, the palette. So the palette. Right. I haven't shown too much footage from the palette just because of the complexity with the uh, filming. But now you're seeing I'm kind of pre-mixing a uh, magenta-like color. Here you're seeing the color value web from earlier. I wasn't kidding. I'm still using the organization of the color value web. The flesh tones aren't that much more complicated than what you saw before. I promise you. Now again, that magenta-like color that I mixed up, I'm using that to draw out the flowers in the background. Do I care exactly what flowers I'm painting? No, I don't. And maybe it's just my personality. Allow your own personality to show through in your own painting. Remember, your painting, as some would say, your painting is your world. Be creative. More creativity is needed. In the photo reference, this didn't exist. The flowers to the corner of the hair, but I thought, you know what? I think that it could use some flowers just on one corner of the hair. Be creative. Don't let yourself be tied down by trying to make something super realistic or to be too literal with the photo reference. And this is what makes painting so much fun. And now I'm just adding a little bit more uh, darker flowers 
excuse my English there. I'm just adding some more flowers in the background in the distance. Just a few more. How about we put some flowers underneath of the hand as well? And I want it to frame the face. I don't care about the photo reference. I don't care about what kind of flowers these are. I care about how does this affect the painting in a positive way. One last little adjustment. I'm going to even out the bottom of the clothing. And we're going to call that a finished original oil painting. If you would like to see more painting videos like this one, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you would like to support this channel even more, please check out my Patreon account where I have behind the scenes footage of this painting along with live chats, live painting demonstrations, as well as mentoring through constructive critiques. And it's now time for our new patron shout out so thank you thank you so much kfl thank you thank you so much lisa esmer and thank you thank you so much lakeshia t reed your support means the world to me thank you so much for becoming members on my patreon account and don't forget to check out this week's behind the scenes footage for the development of this painting. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next episode.